There's a couple of words, if I may, that I hope I don't burst into tears. So please bear with me. There is one more angel in heaven. There is one more star in the sky. This short tributary of remembrance was written by both Sue and myself. We'd like to welcome you here this morning in memory of my daughter Katie. And we'd like to thank you guys for the plants and the trees that you're going to place in Katie's cove. We also know that many other family and friends from all over the world who would have loved to have been here but with present travel bans and for other reasons couldn't make it. We do know that they are here, however, in spirit. I hope spirits can't transmit the coronavirus. They are also aware that anybody can come at any time and there will always be room for their special plot. Kaylee spent her first six years living in game reserves. From the time she could walk, I would take her for walks in the bush and teach her about it. It didn't take her long to actually take control of our walks. She led the way and as we went she would point out different animal traits and say, look daddy, could you walk? Look daddy, impala walk. And most of the time she was right. We had just returned from a holiday one year and Katie had bought presents for her friends which she wanted to wrap. She went to my desk where we kept wrapping paper. She saw a lovely patterned paper and as she was about to pick it up, this paper moved. She screamed and ran out shouting, snake, snake, snake. She ran straight up my body and landed on my shoulders. It turned out to be a meter and a half python that had called up in my desk. This upbringing, she had a great love for wildlife, and in fact all animals. And she had two cats of her own. Every trip she made up here to Botswana needed to have a wildlife component to it. This is another memory that comes back to me. At an early age, she came running up to me and said, Look daddy, I can write and handed me a piece of paper, just full of scribbles. I obviously told her that she was brilliant, clever, genius, well done, and then I asked her what she had actually written. Her response, in a tone that was making out that I was actually stupid, was, Daddy, I've learned to write, but I still don't know how to read. She grew into an amazing young lady, intelligent, fun, and beautiful. With abundance of friends who really loved her. They keep talking about how Kaylin had motivated them and had changed their lives. She was also a very keen gardener and plants surrounded her home. I feel at a time like this, one cannot be self-centered. This is not how we feel. Kaylee is the one to be considered. She is now free of whatever pain, concerns and worries that she had that led her to do what she did. Where it was dark, now there's light. But where there was pain, now there's joy. Spread your wings and fly. Sorry. Some of you might know this. This is a branch of the Zizifus macronata. In English, we call it the buffalo thorn. In Botswana, it's called Makholo. Makhalo. Sorry. <laughs> and it is believed standing underneath the tree will be, people standing underneath the tree will be safe from lightning. It is a spiritual tree. The older it gets, the more pronounced the zigzag branches are. And this is from a young tree, unfortunately. But this indicates your path in life. It's going to have peaks, it's going to have downfalls. It also has, if you 
Let me quickly just show you a thorn that goes straight up and a thorn that curves back. Straight up and curves back. And I believe that you must always look to your future but never forget your past. And I'm not just giving you a botany lesson here, but I do have some purpose for this. Its Zulu name is Umlashli Mkosi, which means which buries the chief. It is in their belief that when somebody is buried away from home, a branch of this tree is placed on their grave. The spirit comes up and enters into the branch. The branch is taken home and the, and the spirit is released. Even though I am now a Matswana, I was brought up in Durban and feel that some of the Zulu culture rubbed off on me. A branch of this tree was placed on Kalen's body prior to cremation. That branch will finally come to rest in her remembrance garden. I suppose we can say it's presently in quarantine. We may have to get together again to welcome her spirit not only to her garden but to Botswana. Most of Kaylee's friends and family have told us how much Kaylin loved Botswana and couldn't wait for her next trip up here. Kaylee was supposed to come up here in June for her birthday with a few friends and asked to stay here at the plot, in fact, in this exact spot. The last trip up here was a bit hectic. It was Christmas of 2017. I had to go and see a doctor on Christmas Eve for medical re reasons, and he promptly wanted to hospitalize me for high blood pressure. I negotiated with him by inviting him for dinner. Christmas Eve dinner that the four of us celebrated here at the plot. And the better of the, the lot, I didn't have to go to hospital. A good friend of ours, the mortal, came on one of the days and kidnapped Katie for the day. We took her and showed her places we didn't know about yet. And they had an amazing time. We have seen some videos of them laughing and singing and having a ball. Sue and Kaylee built her shelter for the goats, which was hard work, and I couldn't let them battle along, although they had done such a great job. So I stepped in to help. When the shelter was finished, so was Kaylee, and she promptly fell asleep in the goat chair with the goats. She's going to be missed by many. It may be hard to believe that I'm even going to miss her messages to me asking for money. Let the rains continue to wash away any tears. Let it fill our souls with joy and bless her little garden. Kelly, you may have left us, but you will never be forgotten. And we love you more than words can say. Thank you.